So step number one, I have um, my loop station here. Uh, it's it's nice because I can I can uh, control three separate channels at one time. Um, mm. And so what I do first is I lay down a cello track that ends up getting reversed on the loop station. Okay. So should I go ahead and yeah, do that? Yeah, go okay, ahead. Here it goes. So you can hear the looping cello going. All right, so now, again, this is the reverse track. I want people to hear it for a second. And when you constructed the song, did you hear that reverse sound as you were writing the, uh, the lyrics and song as you went along? I did, actually, yeah. I, I originally started with that reverse line, um, was, was the first line of the song, and I went from there, kind of. Um, I knew that I wanted sort of a driving... Um, the driving reverse cello song and then building a string pizzicato section underneath that was kind of the goal. That's a very interesting motive. I love the technique. Okay, move on to step two then. Okay, here's step two. Bass line. line going through there and that also creates a bit of percussion for the song and a little bit of a beat as well that's right very cool all right moving on next is uh, pretty much the the middle line so I guess in the orchestra it would be the viola section part where you're going to put the bow oh sorry I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. first part you got to put the bow to the cello itself um, how many pedals are you using to orchestrate this whole thing so this is um, I have some preamps that my cello goes in um, basically when you electrify a cello you have to try to make it sound like a cello again right um, because you know any any pickup on an, on an instrument this old is not meant to be picked up with, an, <laughs> with electronics uh, so I feed it into a delay which I'm not using right now but really right now I'm just basically using this loop pedal and putting a little bit of reverb on it um, to warm up the sound a little bit. When you actually put the pickup into the cello itself, physically put it in, yeah. did you have a professional do that? or? I did. Okay. Actually, there's a guy um, just outside of Charlottesville who's an instrument maker that okay. I really love his work. He made a new bridge for me, and the, the pickup actually fits right under the bridge. Um, so it's pretty active and, and loud, and it sounds fairly like a cello, I think. Um, How trepid were you going into that experiment? Um, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, you know, anytime you, you mess with an, with an instrument this old and, and kind of pure in its sound, you always worry about changing the sound. But I, I think it's, it, it came out great, and, um, and I'm pretty happy with the pickup in general. So. We're talking with Wes Swing about how he constructs a song, in particular right now his uh, song Lullaby Robot. Uh, where we've done the treble, we've done the bass, we've done uh, the viola section, uh, and of course the reverse part at the beginning. Uh, all right, so what's next, Wes? So next, uh, come in vocals, and here they go. Lullaby, say goodnight all the time. Then you can sleep for a thousand years and roam. Next, the cello bow. Turn your reverb back down. Um, it just incredible. How long did it take you to develop this whole process? Uh, so this, I'm. I feel like I'm still learning the loop pedal. Honestly, um, the the looping is really um, precise. I yeah. guess uh, it's kind of embarrassing in live performances. If you mess up the loop, you pretty much have to start the song over again. Um, but I'm. I feel lucky these days that I'm playing with a full band off, and and I have a you know a band to back me up. I'm doing a little bit less looping than I was before, but I still loop in almost every song. Um, 
But I think, you know, the, the loop pedal itself is a steep learning curve and then playing in tune with it and playing in time is, you know, still something I'm kind of trying to figure out uh, as I go on. Your technique on looping is almost masterful in the sense that it's seamless. Uh, sometimes with looping artists, you have to wait around for them to build things, feel the next layer, get the rhythm right, and then progress on. And then, you know, half hour later, you're finally, oh, okay, it's like a three minute song in reality. But you tend to do things in such a seamless nature, you actually set it up as you go so quickly that we, the audience, without blinking an eye, are grabbing the, the song with you. When you create the song, do you actually hear how you're putting the elements in? I do. I mean, I, I take a lot of care in, in the looping process because I don't want to sound like someone playing on a loop pedal. Right. I hopefully want to sound like a songwriter playing a song. And so I try to make it as seamless as possible for that reason, um, just because I, I, you know, I think it's boring to sit and, yeah. and listen to someone loop for 10 minutes before they start singing or, or before the song really gets going and then having to reconstruct it again in part B of the song. So try to do it as quickly as possible. And, you know, my band really helps a lot with that, too. The fact uh, that you're able to build this narrative in your head is the mind-blowing part to oh. me. But, you know, you're constructing not only just a wonderful poetic lyric, but to uh, actually process this in your head as you're painting your oral picture is phenomenal. Hats off oh. to you, sir. It's, well, it's just you. absolutely wild. Uh, <laughs> and, and to actually tell people how you're doing it because it's such an abstract process. That's off to you. Very cool. cool. Thank you very much. Uh